Good morning, high performance computing fam, and welcome back to Denver, Colorado. We're here at Supercomputing 2023. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host, David Nicholson. How, how are you doing, man? Doing well. You I'm, came in all juiced up this morning. I've been very excited coming off of a couple of my uh, Wharton classes and meeting with someone from Cambridge. What could be better? You're feeling intellectual and academic. I'm going to I'm going to do that my best. That must be a first. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try right. I'll try to hang. Well, I'm really excited for our next segment. We have a Cube veteran Andrea from Dell. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. And we've also got Paul from Cambridge representing the intellectual academic side of things. It might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel that intellectual after last night. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. It is day 4. It is day we four, are at yeah. elevation. It is arid. My vocal cords are certainly showing it, but yeah. really excited to talk to you too. There's been a partnership between both company, or between Dell and Cambridge for 17 years, which is awesome. We've got projects to talk about. Paul, I want to turn it to you first. How's the show going for you? I imagine you've been to many supercomputings. I've been to 22 supercomputings. <laughs> you and might be our record holder on the show this it week. It was much easier so. 22 years ago, <laughs> believe me. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I heard this is the largest ever. Someone this told me. Yeah. It feels like it this time. Yeah, yeah it feels over like 10,000 is I what think we we've were got seeing. The, you know, COVID thing out of the way, and everyone wants to come out and chat and talk. It's good. Yeah. yeah. So, so they they were they were whittling microprocessors out of wood back then, right? I mean, no. <laughs> 22 years I'm ago. Am I that old? Man. <laughs> Wooden supercomputers. Yeah. Floppy disks and. <laughs> <laughs> the Beowulf clusters, I was right at the start. That's when I got involved in the very beginning of the okay. Beowulf clusters. That's 22 yeah, yeah. years ago. So. I was oh walking gosh, down the, the kind of uh, history panels out the front that made me feel old. <laughs> Are you on one of those history panels out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have, to, we'll have to work on that. Andre, we had the pleasure of talking to you last year. Yeah. Big announcements for Dell coming out. I know that Cambridge implemented some of what you announced last year. Tell us about what's going on. Yeah, so last year was, you know, we used SE22 for our huge launch of our XE portfolio, yeah. um, in which, you know, I, I kind of iterated, we were focused on a couple key things. One being versatility um, in, in vendor, diversity mm -hmm. within our products. The other being able to meet customers where they're at in regards to thermals from a liquid and air cooling solutions. Yeah. Now we get to see it in action, which is so incredibly cool, because you know, University of Cambridge took our first um, XE 9640 right off the line. Uh, it's yeah, our liquid it's cooled exciting. variant. And it's also our Intel Ponte Vecchio variant. So it, it's both parameters. Which is, I, I love that you just said that, Andrea. It, it, application is what we're starting to see here at the show. It feels yep. like we've tipped over hypothetical and there's so many different use cases. I can imagine, Paul, being in, in the research side of yep. this, hot topic, you're on the front lines. What are you seeing? What are, what yeah, are right. the so, students and So this machine doing? is designed to kind of be a converged AI and simulation platform. So we want to run simulations, we want to run AI, and we actually want to run simulations that are informed by AI. And so we want a GPU system. Uh, we chose Intel mainly because of the one API programming environment that allows us to develop codes across platforms. So this is actually the fastest AI system in the UK. We got 20 petaflops. We Ooh. the system's up and running now. We should be nice. doing early science in December. And uh, one feature of this system that's actually quite interesting is from cardboard boxes in my loading bay to Limpack took us just three and a half weeks. We had to stand up. That a super is computer. super fast. Boxes to HPL in three and a half weeks was kind of kind of stellar. And uh, it shows what can be done if you focus. Of course, we've been working with Dell for a long time to get to that stage in co-designing the box. Yeah. And uh, working with Intel in the software environment. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's rocking and there's a lot of applications already that we can put on that system that are going to make some real impact. So I had the pleasure of, uh, of joining in the Dell Summit, uh, HPC Summit, and I saw your presentation. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to hear about uh, essentially your kit. If I remember correctly, it was something around 100 million pounds of investment. Uh, and, and, and particularly, I want to know how you maintain security and you keep out the mongrels from the industrial, the filthy industrial town of Oxford. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, in, okay. in, in particular, <laughs> but but in all seriousness, tell tell us about tell us about the size and scope of of, of, of what you're doing. Yeah, so the size. So this is uh, 258. 9640 servers. Each one of those servers has four GPU cards. So there's 1,024 cards in total, 32, I can't do my maths, 1,032 cards. Each server also has four HDR200 links because we really wanted this to be as scalable as it could be. That's why we actually chose this 2U Dell server because we can get four full width PCI cards in there for the networking. So there's one 
Infinity Band Link per card. There's oh. one NVMe drive per card. So you've got a large local NVMe uh, capacity in the servers, and then you can get out to a large solid state storage pool. So in total, it's, it's a really powerful machine. I, yeah, it sounds like a very powerful machine. Tell us a little more about Project Dawn. Yeah, so as I said, Dawn was funded uh, by a co-design partnership with Dell, Intel, and the UK government. And it's really designed to push the UK, kickstart the UK's AI capability. The UK has been underfunded for some time, but the, local, the current administration recognized this, and we're ramping up our federal funding dramatically. And this is the first of a series of AI-focused machines in the UK. And we are targeting it at, at three kind of science use cases to begin with. Uh, I think the first one is the fusion community in the UK. So the UK has got quite a large activity to try to develop a fusion reactor, putting energy on the UK grid by the 2040s. Of course, fusion is a huge, is a huge problem. The simulation domain is multi-physics, multi-time domain. It's, it's a really big simulation problem. So we work with UKA quite, quite heavily. The second domain is pushing AI into clinical medicine, actually into the clinic mm -hmm. for patient processes. Of course, most clinical research is in the lab, but pushing IT into the clinic is, is a different matter, and we've been doing that for some time. So there's a lot of activities in pushing HPC and AI for various domains in clinical medicine. And the third domain is climate science. So we support a lot of climate activities globally. We have a lot of climate science research staff and uh, software development staff, and we want this machine really to push the boundaries on climate science. You know, it's a, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating loop when you think about using AI to advance energy technology yeah. so that enough energy will be available to power the machines <laughs> yeah. in, in, or, a, in order to- It's a bit of a yeah. vicious circle, man, but yeah. yeah. I mean, clean it's energy is a, is a huge one. And using AI to shortcut some of the computational cost of simulations is, is going to really revolutionize what we do. Because most simulations, and a lot of simulations, are solving large partial differential equations, right? So at the heart of many simulation codes, it's a PDE. Right? Across from fluids to electronic structure to materials, it's all PDEs. And we solve them by brute force, and that's really expensive. So we need exascale machines. But if you can use AI to simulate that PDE, you can get an effective exaflop on a petaflop machine, right? So that, that's where I think we're going to see huge gains in yeah. the coming years in science. It is a really exciting. I mean, supercomputing super as, as an industry, high performance computing started with a lot of simulations and weather and climate. Yeah. And it's amazing to see us scale and, and evolve orders of magnitude essentially yeah. in what's possible. Andrea, I love that you just touched on this, Paul, the, the collaboration between government. Uh, academia and yeah. enterprise partners like Dell. How important are these partnerships for you and, and how, I, I'm curious since you had the big announcement last year and AI is so hot, are there more and more countries and government organizations and, and people reaching out to try and collaborate like this? Absolutely, I would say one of the key focuses we have is actual early engagement with really, really strategic partners. Um, you know, when we're looking at our next generation product designs, their feedback is so, imperative for us, yeah. um, you know, when, when we can have the early feedback in regards to, hey, this is where our head's at, this is what we're thinking from a design perspective, and we can actually get live feedback that can influence the design to yeah. make sure it's exactly designed for what our customer needs. It, 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 that's one of the, the top tenets of, of how we design and articulate what we need to go do. Well, it's, and, and, and I love that. I mean, you're designing with, with your community in mind and making sure yep. that you're optimizing some of the hottest hardware on the planet, uh, quite literally, to do so. Are there, are there any trends in the converse? I realize there's obviously, you're very early in the process sometimes in these strategic dialogues and probably can't disclose, but are there any trends that you're noticing? We've had a real sense of FOMO here on the show as everyone's yeah. trying to catch up. Are you experiencing that? I, I think one of the biggest trends, and we touched upon it last SC, I think everyone was talking about, oh my gosh, the TDPs and and thermally, mm -hmm. now a year later, yeah. it's exploding way more. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and that's where, especially in the acceleration space and, and these types of products and designs, yeah. you know, I think one of the most critical things when we're talking to customers now is the, the conversation changes to we need to be educating and bring them along the journey of five years out 
because you know, for, for a lot of these products, right. from a thermal perspective, liquid cooling is just when, not if anymore. And, yeah. and we actually have to plan the CapEx investment now, right? And it's two key parameters, right? One is going to be, how do you plumb a, a facility for yeah. water? The second is make sure you have the right rack power. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. even, you know, the, the right well, because the, weight that can be supported by the floors I mean, in some of these <laughs> <you hear laughs> locations. The, the different time scales that infrastructure build up, right? So your IT infrastructure, you might be looking at a year time scale yep. from inception to completion. But the data center around that, you've got to do big work in your data center, you're talking two years, three years. So you need to be thinking two or three years ahead for your data center planning, otherwise you're not going to be able to buy that computer. Right? So yeah. the different time scales here I mean the customers need to be talking with Dell so they can find out what data center That's am I point. building for equipment you're going to be selling me in three years time. Yep. Yeah, and that, that loop is quite a difficult one. And customers are not used to that, because we've been in a pretty static air-cooled environment for a long time, and now there's a big transition going on, and you've got to prepare and look. Looking four, three or four years ahead in the IT space is quite difficult. If you look at the rate of change we're going through at the moment, it's, it's difficult to predict. And, and that's and your the, job, actually. So yeah, you know. I guess. <laughs> and the other key thing I think is you, you mentioned geographically, you know, especially energy prices and consumption. Yep. It, Europe, <laughs> predominantly, yep. um, and a lot of other different areas. Yeah. Sustainability is so critically important um, as as we're looking at, at the future and in different ways to also be able to protect against the cost of the power and how to optimize um, from that standpoint as well. Because every megawatt's costing you two and a half million bucks a year. Right, so that's a lot of money. So small improvements, 10% improvement in energy efficiency yep. because your cooling is saving you a quarter of a million bucks. You're just on one megawatt. You're looking at two people from California, so we're extremely yeah. familiar <laughs> with yeah. you know, uh, residential yeah, yeah. rates of 60, yeah, 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 yeah. 60, cents, <laughs> 60 cents a marginal kilowatt hour. Yeah. This hits home. <laughs> this, yeah. well, at least you're not running a megawatt in your right, basement. Right, no, no, I generate right. megawatts on my roof, yeah. but <laughs> over, over time. <laughs> I, 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 I think that's, we had, we had At North and Dell actually on the show earlier this yeah. week talking about taking liquid cooling and taking that water and actually heating homes in yeah. Copenhagen. Hagen. We're planning something similar. Which is so cool. It was yeah. one of, I feel yeah. like there's a moment every show, thanks to you brilliant, wonderful humans for sharing your yeah. intellect, where it all clicks for me in, in, with some new layer of this. And that was where I got how this becomes sustainable and, and renewable and actually makes so much more sense. And so, yeah, I mean, mind blowing and I love talking about it. It's your aha moment. A hundred percent. Well, and I, you know, I mean, we're all technology advocates. It's why we do what we do and we're passionate about this. But I do feel, and I mean, even with travel, I feel a little guilt about my carbon footprint sometimes. And I feel guilt about the, types of activities I promote because I'm not sure that that's the most climate friendly activity, even if we have to run the climate model. But now, I feel like we're finally at a place where we can see, as much as none of us have a crystal ball, I feel like we can finally see that future is possible and that and that we will build the tools to make that future possible. So, And, I would, and the flip side of the coin is the technology helps with global weather patterning. Exactly. To be able to which predict is so cool. what the future yeah. would be. So it, it, it hits it on both paradigms, ironically. No, which is awesome, <laughs> exactly. I mean, you just mentioned it, it's this, it's this full circle holistic situation and it's so great to see partnerships like yours. Yeah. Paul, I got to ask, since you've been to 22 supercomputings, which yeah. is impressive, how, do you feel like hardware is in the spotlight more broadly now? Do you feel like it's having a moment? Do you feel like? Well obviously the, the AI boom is really focusing people's minds on, Absolutely. on dense, accelerated systems. Mm -hmm. The whole liquid cooling thing has really lifted off. When did you see plumbing at supercomputing shows? You never used to see it. I right? know, but, I yeah. talked about that earlier this week. Yeah. Yeah. Pipes and yeah. tubes. And so you know, for the hardware junkies, it's an interesting time, right? Very. But uh, again, I would say that we should really put more focus on the software. Because with hardware, you might get 1x or 2x with you know, performance gains. With software, you can get 10x, 100x. So the big Absolutely. gains are coming from the software. The hardware is a necessity, and a lot of us are hardware junkies, and we love the cables and all that kind of you know, hardware stuff, because it's, it's what we like, but the real gains are in the software. Well, well uh, on, a, on a happy note in that subject, uh, I mentioned 
uh, off air that uh, I do guest lecture work, yeah. Cambridge CTO program. Yeah. When we talk about the AI stack, what exactly? It's all software. It's we will yeah. we casually mention TPU, GPU, CPU. Let's talk about the software stack. And, and, and so it is. It is a focus, but. We are always harping on the idea of just how, how critical the hardware is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a critical enabler, yeah. but then yeah. a big gain. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we bought a whole lot of A100s, I don't know, three years ago. And those things are just getting faster and faster and faster by themselves. I think the performance on AI has trebled since yeah. I bought that same bit of hardware. So without you even noticing, that same piece of hardware is just getting faster, faster, faster. Yeah. In the AI space, because they can take advantage of lower and lower precision, right? Yeah. And again, the HPC space has got to cotton on to that. If the HPC community is going to thrive, it has to learn how to adapt and use AI technologies. So we've got to get into lower precision, we've got to get into using that AI hardware, and that's how the simulation community is going to benefit from this focus on AI. So we, we mentioned how so much has changed since we chatted a year ago, how much, how much technology has advanced. When we have your wonderful self on the show next year at Supercomputing, what are we going to be talking about then? Can you say? I don't think I can say. <laughs> it's well, <laughs> it's, I, mean, I mean, we're always here for the scoop, Avi, but I, 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 I think the, the next ecosystem of how we are going to go and address liquid cooling in, in a way in which it makes it easy for our customers to adopt. I, I think that's, that's the ease of implementation and, and our that's designs great. are really, really focused on that because everyone needs the easy button. <laughs> The well, end of the day. Such a hot topic. I, I want to yeah, say what, but I was in some Dell meetings this week, <laughs> and for the first time ever, Dell, Dell surprised me. And Dell have never surprised me in 17 years, and it's really exciting what they've got planned. I can't say any more than that, I can only tease you. <laughs> but Jeez. I was surprised and excited with the stuff that we had. Talk in about a 12 it's month cliffhanger, really, Paul. Yeah, just wait for 12 months and then you'll see. Woo. It's, uh, it's uh, looking really, really good. Okay, so no one, you know, it's just us here, right? <laughs> We're just, yeah. it's, We're it's, just in our It's just, just us friends. Just, just us, just Very well illuminated. So, so blink twice. <laughs> if there's any truth to the rumor that Dell is planning to acquire Starbucks and co-locate data centers with Starbucks, using the latent heat from processing to brew coffee. How is there any know? truth How to that? Know? I don't know. Is there any truth? <laughs> okay. There's a rear door cooler ex yeah. heat exchange that goes yeah. directly into the machine. <laughs> right, well so Savannah, Savannah thinks it's cool that we're, oh, we're using this heat. I feel yeah, like yeah. it makes us look like apes. And, and we get so free coffee out of the deal because yes. hey, it's a strategic partnership. Yeah. <laughs> but, eventually, <laughs> but eventually, shouldn't we be efficient enough that it's coffee cold, super not computer. very warm? <laughs> right. How did he know? <laughs> wow, okay. Well, we're going to have to edit that You've out. You've got a leak <laughs> yeah. in your CTO office, Secrets obviously. Don't want yeah. No one needs to lose a job over this interview. <laughs> Taking us in our final direction for our chat, yep. Andrea, you mentioned that Blake, your stepson, is going to be walking the show floor with you yeah. this afternoon. What are the younger folks most excited about in supercomputing? I, I think they just love to come and geek out on the technology, yeah. right? So he he's, uh, goes to DU, so computer science, um, and he, he's all My up to speed. My boy does the same, his computer science, in Manchester. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah, it's how like did the, he get into that? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> AI is it's the thing amazing. that uh, my boys are really interested in. You know, yeah. Today, if you're young and you're in that space, it's yeah. got to be AI. It definitely seems like that. a gateway conversation to yeah. the beautiful high-performance computing hardware behind us. But uh, even seeing what they, they learn in their universities, I yeah. think coming to an event like this and seeing the future of technologies, and then, you know, I, I'm a very visual person, so when you can actually see it, touch it, feel yeah. it, it I resonates in different more. ways. Yeah. And then it also is, is enormous in terms of brainstorming and idea generating, exactly. and then, you know, that, that younger generation is going to fly. <laughs> right. how, how about this for a brainstorm? Internship at Cambridge. Hey, Paul. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's cool. That's, I have my boy <laughs> in my oh, group this summer. Yeah, yeah. How about we swap? <laughs> he's, he's like, Daddy, I, I learned more in eight weeks than your intern than the whole year of Manchester, and I got paid, so why am I at university? Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> it, yeah, don't get me started. Yeah. Exactly, conversation yeah. with my kids. Yeah. On that note, congratulations on your smart offspring, and thank yeah. you both for being here <laughs> on this fantastic that's episode. Andre and Paul, it's so insightful. David, thank you for being here, and always making some creative analogies during our little adventure and getting the secret scoop. And thank all of you for <laughs> tuning in at home here. We are live from Denver, Colorado at Supercomputing 2023. My name's Savannah Peterson, and you're watching theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.